Police are searching for other body parts after the discovery of a torso at a Salford nature reserve. Greater Manchester Police says the human remains were found wrapped in plastic by a member of the public at Curzel Dale. The gender and age of the person are still currently unknown, but police believe it was an adult. A murder investigation is now underway and a search is taking place in the local area. Multiple arrests have been made after thousands of pro-Palestinian protesters marched through central London today for the annual Al-Quds Day demonstration. Protesters marched from the Home Office to Downing Street this afternoon. Pro-Israel counter-protesters were also present, waving flags on Parliament Square and chanting for the release of hostages being held by Hamas. The Met Police says two men have been arrested on suspicion of inciting racial hatred after an Israeli flag was burned during the demonstrations. It says new powers to prevent disruptive protests come into force, with offenders facing up to six months in prison or an unlimited fine. The Foreign Secretary is calling for a wholly independent review into the killing of three British aid workers in Gaza. John Chapman, James Henderson and James Kirby were among seven World Central Kitchen workers who were hit by Israeli airstrikes. Lord Cameron has welcomed the dismissal of two IDF officers and says the UK will now carefully review the findings of an initial report on the incident. The Israeli army says the deaths are due to serious operational failures. And a planned strike by over 600 Border Force officers at Heathrow Airport has been suspended. Members of the Public and Commercial Services Union were due to walk out for four days from April 11th over roster and shift pattern changes that they said would result in job losses. However, the PCS said it was being suspended in an attempt to seek further negotiations with the Home Office. For the latest stories, you can sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Now it's time for headliners. Hello and welcome to Headliners. I'm Nick Dixon, taking you through tomorrow's top stories for the next hour. And I'm joined by Josh Howie. I thought we were going to cut. There he is, going for a big statement with the tie, and Cressida Wetham. Uh, yeah, it's a Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy, is that what Dick, you're going I'm for? I'm going for the Dick Tracy look. You don't, you don't see enough people with the Dick Tracy look, do you? No, I'm trying to bring it back. It's an underrated film, comic book. Yeah. Do you, you have to get a hat to go with that? What, to cover up what? Did he have a hat? Have I got yes, the wrong? he did have yeah. a hat, yes. Yeah. I'd like or to see you in here with a big Federer hat. It wouldn't be more ridiculous than what Simon Evans was wearing. <laughs> the well, other <laughs> when Ray Addison gets one, maybe we'll see it in here. Really? Oh, yeah, this is a stolen Ray Addison tie. OK. I, I still Does anyone in the nation understand what you're talking about? Because I work here and we I don't even know what it means. The people who've signed up to the GB News... App. The app, subscription. No, the subscription. They know. They, they are hoping people to meet Twitter. Ray Addison... For just uh, five yeah, pounds so a month. I don't know, is that what you get? But you get to meet people. But no one's requested me to meet anybody. Really? Yeah, have you, have you, have you, asked, believe, have you been asked to oh, meet anybody? I did with emails, yeah. But I don't have time, sadly. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm well, available. <laughs> Josh is available in so many ways. Let's have a quick look at the front pages then, since it's called Headliners. The Daily Mail has now civil servants to strike over work from home. The Telegraph has mail cuts pose risk to patient safety, say NHS chiefs. The Times pressure on junior doctors to end strikes. The Daily Express, PM, buckle up, Britain is ready for economic takeoff. Really? The Daily Mirror, my hero, that's about the Foo Fighters. And the Daily Star, Kath in a Fury, which is about Storm Kath. I feel like they're running out of names. And those are your front pages. <music> All right, what are the Daily Mail going with, Josh? Sasha Baron Cohen and Isla Fisher have split! What? What? That's very interesting news. That is interesting news because I see myself, my wife, as a kind of much poorer, less attractive... Well, my wife is as fit as Isla Fisher, but she's Antipodean, my wife's Antipodean, I'm Jewish, Sasha Baron Cohen's Jewish, we're both comedians. She converted, my wife converted, so mm. I'm hoping that we're the ones that are going to make it through. They're like you, but with money. Money and looks and talent. Ah, OK. Very close. <laughs> Comments. <laughs> anyway, so anyway you're here on she's TV. available now. And, uh, He's available now. OK, well, there we go. I used to like him, then he went all censorship, didn't he? When he with all that Facebook stuff, he went all pro-censorship. He used to be yeah. like the rebel comedian, then he became the establishment. Yeah, but that happens to us all, doesn't it? Not well, I'm hoping. You. Hi, <laughs> I'm hoping. 
<laughs> I mean, that would, uh, yeah. I'm just waiting for the knighthood. Go on, then. Jo anyway, anything else? but yes, the other big story is now civil servants to strike over WFH, which is a anagram... No, not an anagram, a... Uh, <laughs> It's not even an acronym, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's just because it's got to spell another word. So working it's just from home. Yeah. Woofer. Woof. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this is the statistics staff, and they have to... They've been told to come to the office for two whole days a week. Two days? They've been working from home since a little thing called COVID and lockdown, and, uh, and they'll be able to tell you how that long that was ago. But, mm. well, but they were. Are. These are the people that are supposed to be giving us the crime stats by immigration status, isn't it? They were in the uh, news the other day, yeah. and they said we can't do that because it's going to be too expensive. Yes. And here they are. There we go. And there's been is, I mean, I come in more than this. This bothers me. Two days <laughs> and they're striking. Sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. They've, they've had reduced productivity, uh, increased waiting time for their services. I mean, this is ridiculous. Do your job. But then we're having the civil... There's issues with civil servants all across the board. Well, yeah. Well, the ones who are sort of saying, oh, no, we're not going to sell uh, weapons to Israel. Oh, really? Well, let's see how that works out for the UK. They do Because we want. get more than them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what's Jacob rees Mogg said about this? That's what I want to know. Uh, yeah. Has he, he left any notes up. on anyone's desk? We don't have the rest of the... Subscribe to the GB <laughs> News. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what he said. I think we can guess. Yeah, I, I bet he didn't say that's a jolly good idea. He's handwriting the notes as we speak with a yeah. quill. Um, shouldn't really say that about my colleague, but it's not an insult, is it? It's just a nice image. Let's do the Telegraph then, Cressida. OK, male cuts pose risk to patient safety, says NHS chiefs. Apparently, there's so much late mail, that, mm. so people get written to about their doctor's appointments, and they think that a quarter of missed appointments are because they didn't get the letter on time. Which is so infuriating, if that's mm. right. I mean, how they know that, I don't know, because people might just say I didn't get the letter when they did, but that's... They're getting it from the statisticians. Well, we know what they're up to. Yeah. But aren't they using second-class posts? Isn't that the problem? Well, I thought they would send you a letter significantly in advance of your appointment, so I didn't think... I think they're right. deliberately yeah. sending them late so that they have an excuse for not yeah, having those right. appointments. That's my personal I mean, how late are you? We, we heard that there's 68-week and 75-week delays. Right. Is it yeah. taking them 80 <laughs> weeks to send the letter? I mean, it says here it cuts to second-class deliveries, which makes me think, just use first-class. Also, just use text or emails. Text them, yeah. Brilliant. It's like, yeah. That's going to save them? a fortune. Yo, your appointment's coming up. Whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, I get texts from my GP. Talk about... Yeah, it's, many, it's many take the vaccine, isn't it? That's the only time you hear from the NHS when they're trying to get you to take a vaccine. They're still texting you. Yeah, they're still texting they're me. They're still trying. They've they haven't realised pure blood till I die. Uh, well, I won't die because I'm, I'm a pure blood. Tories blo accused of blocking true blues. That's the other one on there. Oh, yeah. Um, people, people, uh, people. What's a true blue? A true blue is somebody who's a right wing conservative. So a conservative? Well, <laughs> no, because they're all centrists now. That's the new thing, isn't oh, it? Okay. If you're in the conservatives, you have to be a centrist. Um, and yeah, people think that Rishi is doing this on purpose. They think that he's blocking. Uh, potentially really right-wing people getting in. It's Why? Well, not even really right-wing. No, just, just normal, normal right-wing. Right the ones who don't... who believe there should be less taxes, I believe, you know, yeah. uh, less government interference. Yeah. And stuff. Why is he doing this? Just trying to ruin everything before he leaves? Just, just, <laughs> just destroying the country? See you later, guys. I'm off to my job in wherever, America or something. Well, I guess that he sees it as building a future for the Tories, but then you've just got two... Two parties that are pretty much the same. If he was sent in there to destroy the Tories, his actions would be exactly the same. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he was actually been sent in there by Labour or by the deep state... Do you think that's what it is? So you th do you think he's the Corbyn of the Tory party? Yeah, he's just destroyed. I mean, what's he done? I mean, I, I gave him a chance, but I didn't... I mean, sort of. People say he's a nice enough guy, he's smart, although recently they've started to say he's hangry from his fasting and he can't make a decision. I mean, they're going to get obliterated. 98 seats was the most recent prediction. So what is he... And then his last thing is like, by the way, guys, I'm going to pack it with One Nation Tories. You know the thing that the voters rejected and hate? It's, it's like the Conservative Party are not Conservative. That's what everyone hates about them. And he's going the other way. Well, well, I mean, th they're likely to be out for... A probably another election cycle anyway, so mm -hmm. maybe they would write that. Who knows what's you going on? You think they're thinking about the long-term, trying to be the sensible alternative to Labour? I mean, this is going to play into the hands of Reform, who are doing very well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. OK. Well, that's that. What about the Times, then, Josh? Pressure on junior doctors to end strikes. Uh, hope of fresh talks after the consultants agree to terms of a 19% pay rise. That's a big old pay rise, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and now the junior doctors, they're saying, come on, junior doctors, sort out. But the junior doctors have only been offered 10% pay rise, but they want 35%. So that's quite a big discrepancy. So until then, it doesn't really matter that you won't get your 
uh, appointment letters in the mail because you probably won't have the appointment. They'll be cancelled on the day anyway because of strikes. So oh, that's so a silver win -win. lining. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Chris? Well, yeah, what a brilliant. I mean, <laughs> there's so few people turning up for their appointments. We don't need all the staff. Brilliant. Problem solved. No, I think it's it really frustrates me. I, I'm not sure that they should be allowed to strike to the extent that they do. I, I... Oh, really? You don't believe in the right to strike? Well, I, I, I'm on the fence about it, to be honest, because this has been going on so long. When you hear about people... Don't fall off the fence, because then you won't be able well, to get... Well, exactly. That's, yes, don't fall over. Oh, it's icy. Don't go outside if you're old, because we won't be able to help. I mean, that's yeah. not Plus good enough, is it? Don't get COVID. <laughs> Should we talk about Isla Fisher in the, again? Yeah, yeah, that was good, that bit. <laughs> what that they was, that was, that they? was your, yeah, that was your level. She looks more demure in Do you feel like the strikes will just suddenly end when Labour get in? Someone said that to me, and I, I could believe that. You know, they suddenly just end when no, Labour No, I believe there's actually a fair amount of tension between some of the unions The unions and, and the Starmer and, and wing. And Labor, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah probably see. too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's have a look at this very important story in the Star, Cressida. Catherine Fury. Um, it's a picture of a lady with an umbrella, and uh, apparently there's going to be 70 mile per hour winds with 20 degree temperatures. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be a storm. But it's going to be warm, and that's the news part of it. It's a warm, a warm, storm. Storm. A warm, warm storm. storm. Warm storm. And also it's called Cat Cath, which yeah. is good. I like this. I like, I, I like the storms being named after women, menopausal women. <laughs> It is sort of accurate, isn't it? A sort of yeah. just chaos, Last storm, cat, John pain, Gray misery. Of men are from Mars, women are from Venus. He does say, "Don't try and change a woman's mood; it'll change on its own." It's like weather; you just have to stand up to the storm. You just sit it out. No, you don't sit, sit like... it out. You engage with it. What are you being told? There we go. We'll be uh, letting that storm subside over the break. <laughs> and that, that is it for part one. But coming up, honey traps, earthquakes, and fecal water. Sounds like one of those shows with Ray Mears. See you in a minute. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. I see what you've been saying at home. You're very <sighs> vexed about these China cyber attacks. Colin says, what the hell is our secret service doing? They've only just realised what China's up to. You just couldn't make it up. We could have told we you. We knew. <laughs> we knew. We're not surprised. So quite uh... well, Colin, we agree with you. Quite why it's taken GCHQ or MI6 or whatever it is, MI5. It would be MI5 yeah. to know what's going on. And Rod has said, thank you, Rod, if you know how you vote, if they know how you vote, coupled with mass data held also on you, you do, do you not believe they can influence your decision-making process? in any way. I'm not but sure. they won't know. I'm not sure they know how you they vote because that. that's... That's that, not on record anyway, no, is it? it is not. Um, and Ken says these are only able to be carried out because of computers, internet, mobile phones, etc. It seems to me that these inventions are ruining our lives and therefore we were much safer and much happier without these inventions. There is a school of thought that would agree with that, Ken, very oh, much I so. I sort of often think it myself, really. Me I mean, too. I mean, I... The, the, the dark web... I mean, yeah. how many people have been murdered because of the dark web? You do wonder as Brianna, well. Brianna Jai. Yeah, you do wonder. I look at my kids' generation and I wonder whether they will grow up and have a complete rejection of all of this and they will just say, enough, because they will think we were all insane for having become so addicted to our phones. Mm. I wonder whether, as generation after generation do, they will reject it. Wayne, blame Western governments for the rise of China. People were saying this ten years ago and every country ignored it. That is a really good point, mm. Wayne, because we've taken Chinese investment Investment. And obviously, our houses are full of items we've well, bought from made and, in and China. And if you remember as well, we had to get them out of the 5G. Why are we? Had we to did. Get them out, get, literally extricate them. Yeah, from that us. was at least one thing I think they did quite well. Yeah. And Jan says if they've seen the electoral role, what else have they been looking at? That's the threat to our democracy. They never do things by halves. I'm much more worried about my own government looking at what I do online, to be fair. What is that? Go back, we said before, the electoral role is a do public document which you can access if you go to your library. Mm. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel.
Welcome back to Headliners. I'm Nick Dixon, still here with the thinking man, Sasha Baron Cohen, Josh Howie, and Cressida Wetton. There she is. <laughs> Looking very nice. Let's do the, the think, time. thinking woman's I love. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of that. I couldn't think of another one. So just went with lower level sure. sexism. Let's do the times. And when I hear the words honey trap sex scandal, I immediately think of you, Josh. I do feel like I should be caught caught out. I've never sent any pictures. Anyway, let's get You've to received the story. a lot. Caught out. I've never I have fans. received I received a willy one from a comic. Really? Because I heard when you pay for the GB News subscription, you get... You get, you get <laughs> <laughs> that would be... That would be worth it. Yeah. That would... Not with me. That would no. not which be worth it. Which presenter are you... We don't want to say. With that, uh, you'd have well, to I mean, guess. Josh. You'd get it and oh. you would have to guess which presenter it was. Oh, that's a good game. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely launch that service from next <laughs> month. <laughs> anyway, honey, ta uh, honey Trap Sex Scandal... Uh, sexed... Sc uh, scandal so MP say. William Rag will keep the Tory whip. So we did a story earlier this week about spear fishing, which is directed fish fishing, where you try and you sort of you know the people, you pretend that you know the person as you're WhatsApping each other, like, oh I met you here, and how's Bob? And mm. here's a picture of my boobs, send me a picture of your boobs or whatever it is, and then you do it and then they go, ah, now give me more information. It turns out this guy might have been the source of some of this stuff from being on Grindr. I don't uh, think it's might. I think he's... OK, well, his name kind of came up in relation to it and it seems like there was some exposed photos of him and they were like, well, now give me give me this MP's telephone number, give me this yeah. person's telephone number. So obviously he did. So, <laughs> well, listen, he's saying Thank that he's you. very weak and he's very sorry about it, says that he's not going to lose the Tory whip. I've got to be honest, I think he should. What do you have to do to lose the Tory whip? Because yeah. if it's not sending dodgy photos of yourself, then giving away your colleagues' numbers, um, who then also send dodgy pictures, two of them, just send to a random person, yeah, I'll just yeah. send you rude pictures of myself to a stranger. Yeah. And then what do you have to do, Cressida, well, to lose the whip? I, I, that's a very good question, and I don't think we can cover it on this show. Um, I completely I'll agree. Gareth Davis, the ex exec uh, Exchequer Secretary to the Treasury, has said, I would say to anyone watching this, that if you ever feel like you're in a compromised position, if you ever feel like you're being blackmailed, then you should go to the police immediately because it's an incredibly serious matter. Do you think, Gareth? Yeah. yeah. It's so obvious. I wouldn't have... But then how stupid are our elected officials or how horny are they? Yes, this it's a good is question. The problem. They have less security standards than your average person yeah. who would never reply <laughs> well, to anything like this. I was discussing this with a friend of ours who isn't on headliners, and okay. they said I didn't understand the male sex drive and that that once there's a, a some kind of offer um, yeah. that people are, male people are unlikely to back out. Yeah, I still but, find that extraordinary. Yeah, but you know what I mean? I hate to. I hate to defend straight men, but what happened to us? I'll tell you why. We wouldn't get sent things like that. So here's the thing, right? It, it, only gay men would do this, and it's not discriminatory, it's just a fact. Because if you think about it, a woman, if she receives something from a stranger, she's going to be like, block, ignore, that's creepy, that's scary, right? Have a moan. And if a man, a man, have a moan, would never receive that from a woman, if they did, but like, bot or something's up. Well, I think so he, it's was... only gay men that would receive it and send something back. Well, I believe he's gay, Science. but I think that some one of the other people wasn't. Really? So that ruins think... everything I just said. Yeah. Everything you and just said. I believe I'm right, <laughs> and I don't want to change my theory. But then some people are sort of... I think if you're an MP, maybe you're... No offence to any MPs, but maybe you're a bit arrogant and mental as well, so you might think, like, you're as deluded... As opposed to stand-up... Yeah. No, you're what, what would be the offensive thing? But you, <laughs> no, but you might be deluded by your power and oh, your right. sort of your charisma and the aura about you. Of course people are going to be sending me uh, right. naked photos. I'm the MP for Thames on Y. Yeah, but, <laughs> why, but why would you send them back still? Wouldn't you just meet them in your palace? Because I want to meet my constituents. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, yeah, possibly. I mean, they are a bit deluded, it seems like, from this. There was a strange post from the deputy political editor of The Guardian. He said, yeah, yeah, this guy's getting a hard time, Rag, but remember, you know, he was under pressure and being blackmailed, so of course he grasped up his friends. That's worse. Yeah. That's not better. In the Bible, when Peter betrays Jesus three times, that's not considered better. That's considered worse. But it's coming worse. from The Guardian, where they would chuck someone under the... Well, exactly. Anyone but Owen Jones, they chuck under Their them. morals are all backwards. I know. You do wonder how he thought this would stop it. Right. Did you think they, they would stop, or did you think they would just carry on trying to get more phone numbers and more, I don't know, Westminster gossip out of you? But anyway, it's insane. I, I just feel sorry for all the people who are sending genuine sex pictures to MPs <laughs> yeah. now. Ruined. Ruin they, it, yeah. yeah, they're not going to get any reaction. Right. Let's, they're the real victims. Let's do the telegraph. And Gibraltar is Spanish, according to some Spanish bloke, Cressida. That's right. Or it would be if I had the story. It goes on to number seven. Has anyone got a copy of number yeah, six? Yeah, here you go, mate. Brilliant. Didn't bother to bring mine, apparently. OK, Gibraltar is Spanish, says EU Commissioner, as he declares things are better after Brexit. So Spain's foreign minister has issued an EU official with an unprecedented rebuke after he 
joked that Gibraltar was Spanish. So this is uh, Brexit fallout still mm. carrying on. Josh, any thoughts on this, this one? This is Falklands 2.0. Mm. This oh, is yeah, going to be this. Is, oh, the, the Gibraltar! Here we go. Then we're going to get those ships, get them ready, get them packed off. Richie Spencer moment. Yeah, this could be. This could turn everything around because this Spanish MP non-entity went. Oh, oh, Spanish Gibraltar. Right. And that was enough. You say it like he was joking. It does say here he joked, but then elsewhere it's just said they say it's like this terrible comment that's un incomprehensible, and we don't know why he's done it. So was it just a joke, or was it just was he trying to like you know push things a certain direction? Well, it's the, the, it's all in limbo because of a certain thing that happened called Brexit. Mm. Uh, the good news is that when we rejoin, uh, it'll all be sorted out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm annoyed because this is British overseas territory, and I I just checked. It was uh, we've had it since 1713, the old yeah. treaty of U Utrecht. You trash. You yeah. probably know. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have to check that. But um, and this yeah, yeah. guy's saying we're just quibbling anyway. over small <laughs> details, and that's not something Nick Dixon would ever do. No. So, uh... You're right. I find it hard to relate to. <laughs> I will die for Gibraltar. <laughs> we need to keep Gibraltar. It's all we've got left of the empire. Um, I'm damned if we're giving it back to Spain yeah. or the EU or anyone. Yeah. Fine. No yeah. patatas fritas Done. Yeah. for you, Gibraltar. Exactly, and that's what we believe it here at GB News. Let's do the Telegraph now with our obligatory infuriating trans story, Josh. Oi, denying pupils can change sex may be breaking the law, teachers warned. It's not breaking the law. So this is the Bath & Wells Multi-Academy Trust, which runs 42 primary schools, and they have uh, been basically uh, advising their those schools lies. They've been lying, mm -hmm. uh, saying that uh, if a, uh, a trans child is going to be in a, in a bathroom or in a dressing space with someone of the opposite sex, then if the opposite sex has an issue with it, they should leave, which is not part of it's government advice, not breaking the law at all. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that they... That, it's essentially like these policies have been written by some trans activists. They've been left in place. Now the uh, the uh, trust has been kind of caught out. And it's a religious trust, by the way, which yeah. is an interesting thing that you'll find because a lot of this stuff creeps through under the guise of be kind. And certainly that, that goes into religious yeah. spaces, including my own space, which I've talked about before at my own synagogue. Um, and Josh, they, you own a synagogue? I own a synagogue. <laughs> so yeah. made it and, um, but yeah, it's, it's incredible that it, this stuff is still there. It's incredible that even though the law has been well established now, you had Maya Forstater establishing in law that, that you can say that sex is binary. Mm -hmm. They were basically... This, this school and it's... Has this basically been of saying that, uh, no, that's not the case. You could be breaking the Equality Act. It Equality. just goes to show, if you th say things with confidence, you might get away with it. You know, this is like Lewis's whole Don't career, give away my it? Secret. Just <laughs> insisting on things, and then people go, oh, I guess they must be right. It seems very confident. But it's yeah. absolutely wrong. It's obviously activists have come in and written this for them and said, you know, you really ought to have this on your, your website. And it's just wrong. It's... it's Outrageous. Yeah. And now, I should add, it's been removed. I think you said that. It shouldn't be, but you know what? When it, Even though it's been removed, they've said now, oh, we've, it's been removed, it doesn't reflect our policy yeah. now, even though it was up on the websites. The fact that it was, and when you read how mental this stuff was, mm. it doesn't... It was two years ago or a year ago. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's even crazier that it doesn't matter how much time passes. I'm good that it's, that it's the woke Church of England once again. It's a group of Church of England schools, so that's shocking. Not surprising, though. And again, they say the expression that the belief of the belief that sex and gender are unchangeable. That's not a belief, that's a fact. So they're talking about... Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. weird, isn't it? Because the war's won on it. We've basically won, but they're sort of acting like we haven't. They're like that sort of Japanese guy that was still fighting the war years later. Do you know what I mean? They're like well, carrying well, that's on... that's what <laughs> Helen Joyce makes exactly that point. She oh, says really? that those people who invested in it, certainly the parents and the friends of parents, are going to be fighting this at the end because the only alternative would be to admit that they have scarred their child for life, right. basically. And they've just been so they have to. by an ideology. It's exactly. dangerous. Yeah. OK, that was well covered. Let's do the mail. And this story is a 4.8 on the scale of... Victor scale of stupidity, I would say, Cressida. Very nice. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene says, earthquake that struck near Trump's Bedminster golf course is proof that God is sending America strong signs to tell us to repent. How good is Marjorie Taylor Greene? She's very entertaining, isn't she? She recently yeah. told Emily Maitlis to do something I'd love to tell her to do, but um, I, I don't know her. Do you uh, want to just tell some... Some people might not know who she well, is. Well... Who is she? Um, she is... She's an American uh... firebrand. I thought She's Emily Maitlis was English. Oh, Emily Maitlis. <laughs> no, 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 She's no, an no, English no, firebrand no, who got told where to go by Marjorie Green in an yeah. entertaining viral yeah, moment. Yeah, it was funny. So I think Marjorie Taylor Green has a sense of humour. She's very... Uh, 
She's, she's a Republican, she supports Trump, she's very religious, and uh, there's been an earthquake, I should say that, there really has been an earthquake, but uh, 4.8 on the Richter scale, is that good? I, no one's died. Things wobble at that yeah. level. I saw some footage of a woman speaking through it, and halfway through she says, was there a... Did you feel that? And they said, yes, we did. And then they moved on. So it wasn't much of an earthquake. No. Uh, but it's interesting how this... The article, this in the mail, how they basically said... She, she doesn't mention that it's near uh, Trump's golf course. So they've just kind of gone, <laughs> Trump owns a building somewhere near where this earthquake happened, and then we're going to put that bit next to this bit, Very and now point. America's going to fall into a pit of hell if they don't vote for, for Trump, basically. Yeah, I was yeah. a bit disappointed, because it doesn't. it's not a great look for Christians in America. She said, God is sending America strong signals to tell us to repent. And then there was a community note on X saying, when those eclipses was predicted hundreds of years ago, it will not have been caused by contemporary actions. So it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But not all Christians or all nationalists or all Christian nationalists or all Republicans are like this, but Marjorie Taylor Greene, she will say... She's the most like this. She'll drop a clanger, and it is a bit embarrassing. It's a bit embarrassing, but... Yeah, it's not the case. Or she could be right, just for off Or she's purposes, right, yeah, that's yeah, true. For off balance. It could be that America <laughs> is descending into... There are a lot of signs of decay and collapse. I'm just not sure that's yeah, necessarily definitely. one of them. It might just be natural phenomena. Let's do the times. And when it comes to water, do you prefer still sparkling or contaminated with faecal traces, Josh? Indeed. <laughs> uh, Nestle mineral water springs contaminated with faecal traces. Uh, they've, done some, uh, they've done some tests and they've detected a virological risk from transient microbiological contamination of faecal origin. Now, that's what I say every time I leave the toilet. <laughs> Watch out! I've done a, I've done a transient microbiological <laughs> contamination of people. Yeah, might want to give it a while. Yeah, uh, and really, that's that's French. I, I was just speaking French there for poo. Right, I was French. say poo. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Okay. Fine. I apologise. Like to apologise like on to behalf apologize of for everyone. And for, the, for your earlier joke, not for that. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Was that a joke? Uh, and uh, but yeah, it's basically don't drink any water. At all, mm. according to Lewis. This, well, I stick with Highland Springs, Cressida. This is just great for Nestle, isn't it? It might be the end of them. I mean, what a disgusting story. No, uh, no comments, really. I drink water from a tank that has rust in it. Is that dangerous? It's Yes. I always think, oh, a bit more iron, it's probably fine. Two things here, though. One, Nestle have survived some scandals like before, haven't they, let's be honest, with the well, whole yeah. baby milk thing. That wasn't good. And then, also, don't they say every now and then in the papers that faecal matter is in basically everything? I don't know <laughs> what... They didn't capture any of that on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but the radio, Let me listeners, do it again. the radio listeners will have loved that. <laughs> oh, that's horrendous. That's now gone into my drink. Quick, got to be quick, though, Sarah. Definitely directors. fecal matter over here now after that. <laughs> um, I apologise for everyone watching at 5am, eating their breakfast. Actually, the whole nation, I apologise. Well, yeah, because you just told them they're eating fake fecal matter. Well, I've just heard... You know, you hear those stories, don't you? Occasionally, it's just basically everywhere. Do you I think know? you're thinking of the peanuts thing. Peanuts? Peanuts on a bar. By the time you get to the end, they're 4% urine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is ridiculous. <laughs> This is a new low for headliners, but that is it. I hope the radio listeners enjoy that. That's it for part two. But coming up, magic mushrooms, artificial intelligence and artificial ovaries. See you in a minute. Hello, good evening. Welcome to your latest GB News weather update. Storm Kathleen is on the way for this weekend. It will turn unseasonably windy, but it's also going to turn unseasonably warm as well. Here's Storm Kathleen developing to the southwest of the UK. That's approaching through the next few hours to bring some rain to pop more southwestern areas through the next few hours. That rain will turn quite heavy as it moves into parts of Northern Ireland and Scotland. Further south, though, as the night progresses, it will turn that much drier, but the winds will really start to pick up through the early hours of Saturday, particularly across the southwest here. However, it's a southerly wind, it's dragging up exceptionally mild air, so it's going to be around 12 or 13 degrees to start the day on Saturday for many of us. So it's going to be a very mild day. Across the east as well, it should stay largely dry through much of the day, but you will notice that breeze. But it's in the west where we'll see the strongest winds. There is a wind warning in force for Northern Ireland, many western areas of Scotland, Wales and England. Here there's likely to be some travel disruption. So if you are travelling about, make sure you check before you travel travel on Saturday. But in the east, where it's a little bit more sheltered and warmer, we could see 22 degrees on Saturday. Now, Sunday's going to be another fairly mild day, but there's going to be more in the way of showers for central areas of England, Wales, the southwest as well. These could turn heavy. The winds will also remain very strong across the far north of Scotland on Sunday. 
Into Monday, northern areas will likely stay fairly unsettled, but it looks like it could turn a little bit drier across the south with temperatures returning closer to average. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria De Piero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. We've dried up and we want to crack on with the show. So let's do The Guardian. And the star of the new Romeo and Juliet has been suffering online abuse. It's not like the old days when you actually had to go to someone's balcony and shout it at them, Cressida. Nice. Uh, Romeo and Juliet theatre star suffers barrage of online racial abuse. Um, so the Jamie Lloyd company, that's the theatre company, says abuse came after cast list made public for show with Tom Holland and uh, Francesca Amawuda Rivers. And she is the person, I think, who's had this racial abuse. They don't give any... I don't think it's Tom Holland. Well... Yes, thank you, Josh. That's Could the same. Be. People conclusion. hate white people. I don't like to assume. Anyway, they don't give you any examples, which is a bit frustrating because you don't, you know. But we'll Nick, what did you type? Words. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it's woke gone mad. Right? That's all I said. Well, when I first read this, I thought that perhaps there were some people who were not happy with the uh, casting because there are far more black members of the company than white. But I don't know because I don't know. I've got. I was trying to work out what it might be. The woman who's playing Julia is twenty six. She's uh, not. You know, she's she's a proper mature woman. I don't know. Obviously, that's nothing to do with race. I don't. But she's I meant to be know. in the. You, you mean she's, because Julia was like 16. fourteen in the oh, story? You mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, okay, I don't see. I, I think people are. Joining is yeah. people are sick of what they think is woke casting, basically. Even though Shakespeare has been, you know, reworked many times in the past. Yeah. We had the Baz Luhrmann one. You had people like John Leguizamo as Tybalt and stuff. So, but in the in the context we're in now, people are just so sick of what they suspect is sort of deliberate kind of woke casting. They're just looking for it everywhere. So that's maybe. But to have, uh, I mean, I guess one of the fact that. Capitulates or the whatever they are. Uh, what are they called again? <laughs> Capitulates. <laughs> Capitulates. And and the so, yeah, so one of the families happens to be black. Big deal. Like, I don't see why that would elicit such a racist response. Well, like, if that was, if that's, if it's been misread as a racist response, or it could be some genuine racist. We're going, you know what, we don't want to have black, you know, which is, which is wrong. Well, it's Verona, Italy, isn't it? In the in the distant past, so it's like people worry about. You know, these days Anne Boleyn was black and things like that, so people say it's ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah. I know Shakespeare is well known for being reworked because they need to always come up with new ideas. Yeah. But I'm saying in the new context of we've had so many things like this, people are just like, oh, you know, this again. Probably. I guess so. That's or guess. she may well have just been the recipient of a lot of racist abuse, which yeah. is yeah. terrible. Well, that was balanced for you then, I guess. Let's do the uh, Telegraph. And a Labour MP says magic mushrooms should be available on the NHS. Now, how will we tell if we're having a bad trip or just enduring a Labour government, Josh? <laughs> uh, That's well, the thing we need well, to Well, they'll be speak. free on the NHS. Huh? They'll be they, they, because they, you won't have to pay for them. Oh, good, that's, yeah. the, that's the answer. Magic mushrooms should be available in the NHS, says Labour MP. This is Charlotte Nichols. She suffered from a violent crime and it meant that she had to step down uh, as the woman's shadow minister for women and equalities in 2021. Uh, it really affected her badly, um, some serious mental health issues, and she feels that, P uh, that, that magic mushrooms or a component in magic mushrooms, which we've talked about before, psilocybin or something, 
can have a real beneficial impact. We've seen that. We've covered stories where in Australia they've also legalised, I believe, uh, America, they're working with this drug now. In the UK, it's still presently very much illegal, but if it's lowered to a different status where it can become legal for distribution amongst uh, the NHS, but still illegal for my pet mum. My mum loves it, loves a bit of... Psilocybin. Psilocybin. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm torn on this. Well, what do you think, Preston? I think they should let the experts be the experts, and we know that Professor Nutt was fired years ago under a Labour government for writing his paper, Equacy, comparing ecstasy use to horse riding. Uh, he's currently doing a load of work on this. He thinks he could halve veteran suicides if he were allowed to carry out the research he'd like to carry out on this. Mm -hmm. But it's so politically sensitive, because everybody panics when they hear the word drugs, that it doesn't get the attention it could do. Yeah. Which is really sad, because he's not... You know, he's, he's an expert. He's been working in this field for yeah. decades. Well, if it helps veterans, I'm for it, but I'm against any kind of drug, so in that sense, I'm against it. Timothy Leary was trying this stuff in the 60s with psilocybin, these kind of experiments. Mm -hmm. So it's got a long hippie tradition, but I understand these things can have medical usage, I don't know. But luckily, I mean, my slight concern is people have to wait 68 weeks to get the mushrooms, then they'll send it by second-class post and it'll never arrive, you know what I mean? That's the yeah, problem with the NHS. Yeah, that is a problem. He's trying to have your trip. All right, let's do the telegraph. And artificial ovaries are on the way. The words everyone wants to hear from their Amazon delivery driver, Cressida. Amazing. Artificial mm. ovaries on way after medical breakthrough. So researchers discover what is needed for a follicle to mature into an egg, and I have discovered what a follicle is. Mm. Um, apparently, when when women are born, uh, the traditional ones, they have between 300 and 400,000 follicles, which can... They, they, these follicles produce some kind of liquid that then can potentially become an egg. The majority of them don't. It's all very exclusive, isn't it? So you start with hundreds of thousands, then you get a few eggs, and then, you know... It, it, so it's... Just having lots of follicles doesn't mean you've got lots of eggs. I thought it was a stalk. Well... <laughs> yeah. You're telling me this, this is all these makes follicles. me cringe, brother. It's very bodily, kind of. So you've got follicles inside you. Well, I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, no, we don't talk about that on the five a.m. We say store. Yeah, I never liked biology at school because this stuff makes me cringe. Although it's a miracle, obviously it's amazing. Well done, then. So <laughs> these scientists are are now. I, not, by the way, there's no mention of age in this. It's all about people who are infertile. So I don't think they they don't say that this is going to help people have babies for longer, which is usually what these stories are about. That doesn't get a mention. Um, the magic we're working towards is being able to trigger an immature cell into maturity. That's what they're trying to do. So they're trying to work out how to make these follicles produce eggs. OK, Josh, you've had no real problems with fertility, but any comment? Um, I, I just wanted... I was just excited by this follicles because I thought it was going to get some balding cure. Yeah, yeah, no, we, it was All men worse. know what follicles are. It's hair follicles. Yeah, That's but now you... it turns out it was something useless, like I know, ovaries. some woman thing. It's like, who cares about that? <laughs> I wanted a bald cure. Right, right. When's that Why coming? don't you focus, stop with your stupid yeah. scientist fertility thing and do the real scientific work that you're there for and get some, get some hair on this bad boy? Come on, yeah. you're always talking about the decline in birth rate. This is good for those that can't. Yeah, but if I yes. have hair, then it the birth good. rate will go up again. <laughs> no. Is that, what, is that what's stopping not. you? Five kids and all you need That's now is four hair. Is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've learnt so much there. I'm uncomfortable with all of it. Let's do the Times. A Meta's new AI refuses to show images of white people. Has anyone tried typing in group responsible for all the world's evils yet, Josh? Very good. But, well, Meta's AI image generator accused of racism, but it's not the kind of racism that we might think. It's the, it's the other type of racism. They're basically trying to get an uh, Asian man with a white wife, and it was just doing Asian men and Asian men. So it was like, sort of saying, you're not allowed to have, like, mixed marriages. This is this is this this AI. But isn't it, it didn't want to show... It so badly didn't want to show a Caucasian that it couldn't even show a mixed well, race I, marriage. Well, I, I think that it's more that it's kind of saying that... Um, Zuckerberg was wrong. I think, it, I think it could be a racist AI, but in a different way, like I said. That, really? That it's like, it doesn't want intermarriage, even though that's, like, 20% um, of America. And many people point out the irony, Mark Zuckerberg, of who invented Meta, has an Asian wife, so it wouldn't even show the Zuckerberg scenario. I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, no, I've just written down that they should put Meta's racism and Google's racism in the Colosseum and see who can be more racist. Nice. It's a good idea, a joke, Josh. Yeah, no, no, it was a good one. Thanks. I could see from your <laughs> silent response <laughs> that you confused. enjoyed it. Was... Yeah, yeah. You know about Don't worry, this. I explained it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Musk yeah, yeah. And, and Zuckerberg the were going to fight. Yeah. Is that ever going to happen? 
Well, it's gone quiet. I'm trying to bring it back. I was up for that. I don't even like boxing, but I would go and watch that. Does anyone know why these AIs are all racist? Because probably? they're programmed by human beings. Yes, because they're... Exactly. Because they're we programmed by woke source. human beings. Yeah, but I'm imagining that a lot of the programming is done in India, and I'm wondering if they were like, no, we don't want a... a I don't want to look at that. <laughs> no, we don't want a women going off with... <laughs> really? Is that what you think? White bloke. It wasn't India. It was like... It was like Southeast. Asian well, there's the other problem, the is that maybe it got confused because Asian, South Asian... Very confusing. <sighs> OK, well, I'm sure we navigate... I'm, I am AI. AI. <laughs> Maybe. Let's do the Telegraph. And more middle-aged women are watching porn. The typical storyline is a man will come round to install a new kitchen, they discuss which tiles to choose for about two hours, then he leaves. <laughs> that sounds lovely. Uh, She'd just be happy to have a kitchen. <laughs> 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 the older I've got, the kinkier I've got. Don't clip that. How porn is booming for midlife women. Oh, this is so annoying. Um, the objections to the recent series you feel on the subject. No, and I don't feel heard either. Uh, recently, Woman's Hour did this very annoying programme where we all have to talk about porn endlessly because it's 2024 and everything's fine now and there's no boundaries to anything. Uh, and somebody complained uh, and said, Can someone do something to rein in the current Woman's Hour preoccupation with masturbation and pornography? And it wasn't me because I don't listen to Radio 4, but that's exactly how I felt. Um, and so this is an article uh, telling us that apparently women are much more into porn than we know and they just don't speak up. Uh, it says the, <laughs> the vast majority of users of porn are men, but women are catching up, yes. accounting <laughs> for around a third of Pornhub's current user base. And I did think for a minute, is this the trans thing where oh, female... Oh, it's men. What yeah. is Pornhub? I don't know. I don't, well, I don't know, Josh, but... Uh, yeah, and then it goes on to say women are interested in porn because it has a stake in their lives through their partners or their children. Well, that's true, isn't it? I find it depressing, because I expect this of teenage boys and men, but now it's women. Although it is funny that it's, once white, liberal, middle-class women get involved, like this woman, Anna Richards, has created an ethical porn, porn site called Frolic Me. Oh. They would have to make it ethical, wouldn't they, Josh? It's Go a on. really good it's porn site. It's erotica lot. <laughs> <laughs> Very ethical. You feel they, good when you're they, on there. They're saying it because they've got more disposable income, they've got more time on their hands. They've also got more hands on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's my joke. I That's the whole thing. That's right? my joke. Yeah. Is okay. right? Although apparently MILF is the fifth most viewed category worldwide. Yeah, and can you say... After Cresta. Can you <laughs> tell us what that means, Cresta? Spell out each word and... I'm uh, trying to get you five, it's, but don't worry. Um, yeah. It's a mother I'd like to get to know there, there is actually well something... and the... listen to and take for dinner and let her talk. Okay. Uh, there is something very disturbing in this article, which is uh, she said that one of the complaining people about the women's hour that you were talking about, the porn special, said she and her husband found it unacceptable. And the fact that there's a couple listening together to women's hour, I find deeply suspicious and, and really quite icky. It is icky, yeah. Is it like, like a bloke should be listening in by himself if he wants to find out all about women. And obviously women, women they're, allowed to, they're allowed to what? Do you think they're just it? sitting there and, and she's saying, don't you think, Arthur? And he's saying yes. And yeah, exactly. There's something definitely d c cucky, cuckoldy. Oh, well. cucky. I agree. And it's the decline of Radio 4. I'm not sure we're allowed to say most of those words, but let, that's it for part three anyway. So coming up, inspiration porn, the big crunch and knob throwing, all somehow within Ofcom boundaries. See you soon. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday. When I was president of the Durham Union... Mm. Um, uh, oh, in, yes, yes. ..in 2016-17, um, I was hosting a debate, um, which was the question, this house sees China as a threat to the West. Now, it wasn't saying that that's what we believed. That was, the, that was a question. Up for debate. On, on, on one side, we had the former Foreign Secretary, Sir Malcolm Rifkind. Uh, on the other side, we invited uh, a woman by the name of Anastasia Lin. Now, she's someone who's been expelled from China for her human rights mm. activism. Um, she's a former Miss World contestant who's a, a great speaker. But we started getting loads of complaints uh, into, into my inbox from Chinese students at Durham University, and they started to say, uh, why are you hosting this debate? Why have you invited Anastasia Lin? She is banned from China. You can't host this woman. You can't host her. You can't have her well, they copy in your and paste debate. Jobs. Uh, they were all very, very similar. Mm. And we were sort of thinking, well, this is a union that is hundreds of years old, founded on the principles of free speech. We're not going to listen because some students are upset. And then it got to the point where I was pulled out of a tutorial that I was in, told to go to the union office and take a phone call from the Chinese embassy. And so I was taking a phone call here from 
diplomats in the Chinese embassy saying, you have to cancel this debate. You have to cancel this debate. Crazy. At one point, they even threatened the UK's trade terms with China. I think they thought that I was perhaps a representative of the British state. I wasn't. I was a student. Um, but... I ignored them and I said, no, I we're, going to, we're going to host <laughs> this debate. We hosted the debate. It was a massive success. We heard strong arguments on either side. Uh, and, and frankly... Do you know what I... You know, it's a good thing that you were there to make sure that your university and its union upheld the values of Britain and our liberal mm -hmm. democracy. Oh. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Patrick Christie's. Every weeknight from nine, I bring you two hours of unmissable, explosive debate and headline-grabbing interviews. What impact has that had? We got death threats and the bomb threat and so on. Our job is to do what's in the best interest of our country. You made my argument for me. My guests and I tackle the issues that really matter with a sharp take on every story. I'm hearing it up and down the country. That was a beginning, not an end. Patrick Christie's tonight from 9 p.m. only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to the final part of Headliners. Let's crack on with The Telegraph. And Dorset's traditional knob-throwing contest is back. But will trans people be able to enter, Josh? <laughs> That's my question. Well, they can enter, but as long as they perform in the right sex class. Right. A traditional knob-throwing contest back, but choking, fears, forced axing of eating race. This is a one-day festival in Chilfrome. Uh, and there's events like the knob and spoon race and guess the weight of a big knob, knob painting, a knob pyramid... I think, think there's in the might, on a there giant. might be a joke in here somewhere. I feel like this could just all be about uh, the word I've knob because it's also it. a biscuit. There's no and joke in this one. That's Josh. the whole the premise. E the eating race has been scrapped over fears of people choking. <laughs> 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 Uh, they carry, That's carry, what carry, they get a choke on. No, so like, on. Is that where hobnobs come from, I guess? Yeah. It's a sort of dry no, biscuit. It's a biscuity, buttery... Is it, or is it biscuit or is it, a, is it like a roll? Yeah, no, that's the important thing. Yeah. Right. Anyway, they throw it. It's all very traditional and touching. <laughs> There's no touching. But, uh, yeah, the popular knob-eating race, brilliant, in which participants consume as many knobs as they can in one minute will not return due to choking fears. I mean... This it's, is like that last story. <laughs> it's just... You can also pin the knob on, on the CERN Abbas giant. So you pin the knob on a giant, <laughs> it's like a game. Dorset, so, so it's, it's a giant knob. fine. <laughs> when Me Too gets to Dorset, there's going to be trouble, but until I mean, then... This is just... We, this we have is, to go out at 5am. Is... Can I just also say this is in the Telegraph? Yeah, it's the Telegraph. <laughs> this isn't is the star. It's the cultural decline. This is, not, this is not the star, this is the Telegraph. <laughs> this is one of these stories that our producers put in just to try and get us all fired. Yeah, but we're legally allowed to say knob as much as we want with Are this, we? surely, for Ofcom reasons. Yes, yeah, because traditional knob throwing contest. Yeah, exactly. Let's not throw the knob throwing contest story. At its peak in 2019, more than 8,000 people attended. That's 8,000 people with a terrible sense of humour. <laughs> well, there's not that much to do in chill from, I imagine. No, it's apart from play with your knobs. <laughs> 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 or eat your knobs. I don't know. Exactly. I mean biscuits as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Well, just oh, normal quality TV. Cool. Let's do the times, then. Let's do the times. Matthew Sweet's going to clip that one up. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. I thought it was all fine. It was a touching moment of traditional uh, English pastimes. Good. Yeah. Let's do the times. And dark energy is thawing, which is what I say when Lewis Schaefer leaves the building, Cressida. Uh, never mind the Big Bang. Universe could end with a big crunch. It's nice, isn't it? Um, at last, some good news from scientists. All that is of value in the universe and civilization. Uh, we, we thought it was going to end up as a ravaged, frozen, eternal wasteland, but it's not. It's going to crunch away. Uh, They're always changing I, it, aren't they? It's all made up. It's all nonsense. They don't know what's going to happen at the end of the universe. No, I don't think they do. I think you're exactly right. I think 
Yeah. But it sounds better, the crunch, the dark... Does it? Well, Does... the, I like that dark energy is thawing, because dark energy is pushing the world apart. So they thought it was going to keep going apart. It's heat death we've heard so much about. Now they're saying, no, no, it's not going apart. The dark energy is thawing. Be... I, think, I think God knows what he's doing, and these scientists are already catching up. They're trying to understand it. They can't understand it. Well, if it contracts, the idea is that then it would get to a point where there could be another potential big bang. So it's the cycle of life yeah. on that grand scale. That is a nicer idea. When you read a lot of science fiction comic books like I do and various films, that is an idea that's propagated quite a lot. OK. Uh, rather than this endless death thing, which would be at the end mm. of Marvel, the universe, the, the no energy. Yeah, and, the nothingness. Yeah. But no one's ever s proved the Big Bang, obviously. The idea that something comes from nothing, fundamentally absurd. Now, of course, on, on the religious, on the Christian side, they say, well, God was there first. And then people say, well, well who created God then? And again, you get the infinite regress problem. So no one's solved it. And I don't believe the I think the important thing is that it. we're all going to die. This says, I don't believe in assisted I'm not. crunching. Good morning. Though. It's got to come when it no. comes. No assisted dying. I'm glad you brought it back to your political okay. agenda. Let's do the telegraph <laughs> then with a story about inspiration porn, which I thought oh, meant God. people listening to my podcast, but apparently what, what is, it's something yeah. else. <laughs> what is going on? There's porn. Uh, norms. We did, I don't choose the story. This is it. Yeah, uh, it's it's an interesting point. Uh, Power Olympian says not not all disabled people are heroes. Some are just scum. <laughs> no, no, she doesn't say that. But well, this is. They are. Some, some I'm sure they. I'm sure there are. This is Baroness Gray scum. Thompson, and she said the Welsh Life Pier. It sounds like. She was walking down the road. Oh, that was genuinely... I don't know what her disability is, but she, whatever it was, wheelchair... Will she, anyway, that was... OK. Yeah, anyway, the point is, yeah. she was going down the road and someone said, you're a real inspiration because she's won loads... 11 gold medals, so that's fair enough. Then she said she was with a friend of hers... I don't know if she's a friend, but an accountant who's also disabled, and they were like, oh, and you're an inspiration too... Mm -hmm. But th then it sounds like that. Pa like, the why? Baroness, why she like, yeah, exactly. Like this is, a, this is just accountant. Why is she? Yeah, yeah, why yeah. is she? Get... So it sounds yeah. sort of like sour grapes a little bit. Right. Where she's like, I'm the knob throwing champion. What have you ever done? <laughs> yeah. So that's what it. That's what they're just. It sounds like the end of a gig when somebody says, "Oh, I loved your stuff." And you were good yeah. too. Oh yeah. And you, were you yeah, on? Keep, keep, <laughs> keep going. Keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but it, of Fair course, point, it is a point. This side. But she does also make some really valid points. You know, about train access hasn't improved. Um, education for disabled children is still a struggle. Access to sport facilities. There are real. There are real hardships for people who are disabled. And the question is whether this stuff is getting better or not. Okay. Well, let's quickly do this one in the mail then about pig skins or something, Cressida. Women in their 70s no longer need to wear bras thanks to £6,000 de-sagging internal bra surgery, which involves pig skin. Yippee! I, uh, there's so much in that headline, isn't there? Um, women in their 70s... All of it's awful. ...no longer need to wear bras if they don't want to, do they? Uh, yeah, it's some, some horrible thing <laughs> that right. involves putting a piece of pig skin and creating some kind of scaffolding that the tissue can then grow around. I mean, yeah. I just hate all this mad surgery, BBLs, all of it. It makes me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we finally got one on camera. That was good. <laughs> Josh will do that. You can hire him now to just do that for your children's party if you want. Uh, 14 seconds left. Anything to say, Josh? I just want to keep spitting stuff. Is that, That's the level now. Just pure <laughs> Wow. Well, Pigskin internal bra! <laughs> I'm never going to take you seriously on the Middle East again. All right. The show is pretty much over, but let's have another quick look. Thanks, guys. Let's have a quick look at Saturday's front pages. So, the Daily Mail has now civil servants to strike over a WFH, which is of work from home. The Telegraph and mail cuts pose risk to patient safety, say NHS chief. <laughs> the Times, pressure on junior doctors to end strikes. The Daily Mirror, my hero. And the Daily Star, Kath in a fury and those we are front pages, which I managed to do despite quite a lot of duress there coming from Josh's way. But anyway, that is it for tonight's show. Thanks to Josh and Cressa. That's the one time you didn't do it when the camera's on you. Uh, Headlines is back tomorrow at 11 p.m. And of course, if you're watching at 5 a.m., then stay tuned for breakfast. But for now, we're going to dry off. It's good night, good morning, and God bless. All right, my. A brighter outlook with Box Solar and sponsors of weather on GB News.
Hello, good evening. Welcome to your latest GB News weather update. Storm Kathleen is on the way for this weekend. It will turn unseasonably windy, but it's also going to turn unseasonably warm as well. Here's Storm Kathleen developing to the southwest of the UK. That's approaching through the next few hours to bring some rain to pop more southwestern areas through the next few hours. That rain will turn quite heavy as it moves into parts of Northern Ireland and Scotland. Further south, though, as the night progresses, it will turn that much drier, but the winds will really start to pick up through the early hours of Saturday, particularly across the southwest here. However, it's a southerly wind. It's dragging up exceptionally mild air. So it's going to be around 12 or 13 degrees to start the day on Saturday for many of us. So it's going to be a very mild day across the east as well. It should stay largely dry through much of the day, but you will notice that breeze. But it's in the west where we'll see the strongest winds. There is a wind warning in force for Northern Ireland, many western areas of Scotland, Wales and England. Here there's likely to be some travel disruption. So if you are travelling about, make sure you check before you travel on Saturday. But in the east, where it's a little bit more sheltered and warmer, we could see 22 degrees on Saturday. Now, Sunday's going to be another fairly mild day, but there's going to be more in the way of showers for central areas of England, Wales, the southwest as well. These could turn heavy. The winds will also remain very strong across the far north of Scotland on Sunday. Into Monday, northern areas will likely stay fairly unsettled, but it looks like it could turn a little bit drier across the south, with temperatures returning closer to average. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. With thanks to Variety Cruises, a family company sailing since 1942, you have the chance to win a £10,000 seven-night small boat cruise for two. With flights, meals, excursions and drinks included, you'll be able to choose from any one of their 2025 Greek adventures and explore Greece like never before. Plus, you'll also win £10,000 in tax-free cash to make your summer sizzle. And we'll pack you off with these luxury travel gifts. Fred chance to win a prize worth over £20,000. Text PRIZE to 63232. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB04 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on the 26th of April. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if listening or watching on demand.